Alrighty, it's time. You know the drill by now. Some of you tweeted questions, some of you posted them on the OTR Central Facebook page. I'm splitting them up into their own videos. This is the Twitter Q&A. The Facebook Q&A will come up soon afterwards. Thanks again for you guys submitting your questions. Let's see how this goes this time. I don't seem to be in the most entertaining mood, so maybe that'll be a good thing for you. Maybe it'll be bad. I don't know. Uh, California EST 96. Was LBJ a good president? Um, on social issues, you know, when you look at uh, um, certain social issues such as Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, um, when you look at other matters such as Medicare and Medicaid, I mean, he has a, a great track record on those issues, but then he's ultimately always going to be the president associated with Vietnam. You know, and then he's a guy that many people believe might have been behind uh, the assassination of JFK, so concluded. So, I guess it depends on your definition of good. The same shameful thing is, though, is that he did do some good things that helped out a lot of people for a long time. Uh, and will Triple H adopt a boy since he can never make a son? Uh, maybe one of his daughters will end up a lesbian. Who the fuck knows? That'll be the closest he's going to get. I don't know. He's probably going to need to adopt a boy. Something about the breakfast club that can't make sons. Uh, Danny Crew, which celebrity endorsement involvement would the WWE benefit most from having right now? Uh, LeBron James would probably be a good one. Um, you know, especially, I don't know, it's summertime, SummerSlam. LeBron's not really doing anything since it's the off season. You probably could have found a way to get him involved at some point in time in something. A few years ago, it might have been somebody like Timmy Tebow. Um, in terms of celebrity, I'm surprised with Cena being that train wreck movie. I don't really recall Amy Schumer being involved in anything at all. She seems to be getting buzz right now. Um, you know, instead, the WWE will go after somebody like Stephen Amell. Oh, <laughs> You know, how about somebody that's involved in something that fucking matters? That'd be a good place to start. Nat, what the fuck does your name say? Oh, I'm sorry. Nat Sticks Gray 56. Apparently, I can't worry today. Uh, why did WWE sign Kenta instead of signing Okada or Nakamura when they're bigger stars and have the look? Fuck if I know. Maybe it's one of those things that Triple H likes to feel big by bringing in these shrimps. I don't know. Personally, I don't know why the hell you would bring in Kenta if you have Okada. Maybe Kenta came in cheaper. Maybe Kenta was willing to come and Okada didn't come. Maybe they did go after Okada or Nakamura first. I'm not sure. I don't know. But when I look at it, I, I look at somebody like Kenta and I see him now, Hideo Itami. I'm like, Ugh. And people are hyping this guy up like he's something big. Holy Christ. And then you also ask, Thoughts on the whole Wilmer Flores situation, how he started crying for three, thinking he was traded. Well, that was kind of unfortunate for that guy. <laughs> He's got fans telling him he was traded. He's going up to the bed. <laughs> but you figure he had spent his entire uh, professional career, basically, in the Mets organization. So he had roots in the New York area, probably loved his place. He loved the team. You know... We think about this shit from a fan's perspective. We don't get the human emotion part of it. It can be a traumatizing thing to basically have somebody say, Hey, you thought you were going to be here all these years. We fucking sent you packing this way. Up yours. So it's kind of unfortunate the way that whole thing went down, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Prince of S2. If Sting versus Undertaker happens at WrestleMania 32, do you want the match to be set up at SummerSlam or Survivor Series? Um, personally, I maybe prefer SummerSlam only because I don't really know if they have a productive finish for Lesnar versus Undertaker because I think it's a lose-lose situation, and if either guy wins straight up, it doesn't really work very well. Injecting Sting into the mix could make it work. Although, again, having Sting get involved means that you're trying to go against the grain and have Sting be booked as the villain, and, and nobody wants to boo Sting at this point. Nobody wants to boo Taker at this point. You know, I'm just saying. I, mean, I don't know. Um, 
Nikkei. That's the name. Don't sit there and get on me. That's what it says. It says Nikkei. Should Jonathan Coachman be inducted into the Hall of Fame at some point? Oh God. I, I hope I hope that wasn't a, a serious question. Um, so ugh, I don't know. Well, apparently Kurt Angle retweeted somebody some something somebody asked me. Uh, yeah, let, let me ask this question. Who? Oh no, I gotta find that question first. Yeah, I didn't realize Kurt Angle retweeted. Probably didn't want to retweet me, Kurt of all people. But good luck to you with your neck tumor thing. Uh, Paolillo67, what WWF e pay per view had the best card from top to bottom? Uh, a lot of fans might point to a couple of them that happened in 2002. Might have been SummerSlam 2002 or Survivor Series 2002, and you might not get a ton of argument out of me. Michael Corvin, when Cena retires, do you think we'll hear stories of him being a big backstage politician like we did with Hogan? The only way you probably hear those types of stories it would be from guys that were as old or older than Cena that no longer had any real shot of getting any quality work with WWE. Yeah, then you probably would. Otherwise, if it comes from some of the younger guys compared to Cena, and they were maybe no longer with the company, you might see some things, but they're going to put a bit of a governor on what they say because they want to protect themselves because they want to make sure, ultimately, um, that they don't burn too many bridges. Uh, I think over time, though, we'll start to hear the stories more and more. And then he also asked, what do you think of Brad Maddox and Adam Rose now teaming together on live events as Beef Mode. I think it's good. I think it's fine. You know, it's about time we got a little Brad Maddox back into our freaking life. But damn it all, if you were trying to sit there and set an indoor attendance record at WrestleMania 32 at AT&T Stadium, then God bless it all. We need Honey Boo Boo. We need Brad Maddox. Honey Beef Mode, make it a reality, WWE. Dexter C73. Should wrestling have an off season? God, yes. I know we'll talk about the business connotations and all the other bullshit, and I don't give a fuck. Strictly from a fan standpoint, it would be so much better if I could sit there and say from, uh, let's say from October to December, there's no WWE. I got three months. I could sit there and devote myself totally to football, you know, baseball playoffs, beginning of the NBA season and hockey season, all that stuff. But then come January, you kick off strong and you head towards the Royal Rumble. Man, that would be so much better than having to sit there and watch this shit 52 weeks a year, every single year. Uh, Dexter C73 also asks, which current black wrestler is most deserving of a world title push? I'm assuming you're referencing WWE, so we'll go with that. Um, Kofi, just based off of the dues paid and the time spent, uh, in terms of who's on the main roster, you'd probably have to go with uh, Big E in terms of, I'm talking about main roster, in terms of uh, guys for the future. Because he's got something. There's something there. There's a spark there. Titus O'Neil at 38, you're probably already too old to do it, unfortunately. Uh, so I look at Big E, and I, and I see that type of guy. Of course, the WWE does it. Uh, let's see here. Want Break This. <laughs> nice name. Uh, what should WWE do with all the low-card nobodies they have, like Rose Fandango, Bo Dallas, Eve Slater, Curtis Axel, Damian Sandell. Find something to do with them or fucking future endeavor them. And if what you're going to do with them is just make them a jobber, then make them jobbers and have them have be their job and pay them well to get other people over and to make other people better. You know, otherwise, stop wasting your time with these guys. Why have these guys if you're not going to use them? Uh, ENC underscore 98. Yeah, okay, here we go. This is the uh, question that Angle retweeted. All right. For whatever reason, uh, yeah, he's trying to get himself a big match at Mania. What the hell, Kurt Angle? Why the hell not? I know you want back a WWE very badly, and who could blame you? Uh, what would you think of Undertaker versus real Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 32 in a rematch from their great match 10 years ago? Um, There would be some appeal to seeing Kurt Angle have a final short run in WWE. 
I would have liked it better if you brought him back to face Rusev and Rusev was still doing the Russian thing. Uh, if Swagger was higher up on the card and better, that could have worked as well. Um, I don't know if I want to see Taker versus Kurt Angle, though. I, I don't. Uh, let's see here. San Antonio Spurs fan 2015. It's good for you to jump. I mean, I'm just going to be a smart ass now, but uh, it's good for you to jump on the bandwagon after they've already won the five titles. Uh, when do you see the Shield reuniting? Uh, I don't know. If, I wonder if they'll ever fully reunite. They might reunite in kind of one of these one-off situations. You might see it in next year's Royal Rumble, let's say, or maybe in some type of tag match situation where they need a third man. You know, that, that could happen. I don't know if it'll happen at any point in time soon, though. Excuse me. Uh, Commando 1986. Will we still look back as fondly at matches such as Bret and Austin at WrestleMania 13 or Blab Bad Blood 97 without the Blood. No. Because the blood was a part of the story. And in the case of Brett and Austin at Mania 13 in particular, that was the story. It was the fact that Brett could get Austin to that point, but he still couldn't get Austin to quit. With the blood running down his face, he passed out. You know, it helped the believability of the match. It helped execute the double switch of the characters for the rest of 97. It helped set the table for establishing Stone Cold Steve Austin as the legit toughest son of a bitch on the planet. I mean, it just doesn't work the same if there isn't the blood. It doesn't mean you have to have blood, but I mean, it, it does call into question the lack of believability of the product. You're sitting there and selling violence and physicality, and yet these guys don't bleed. So you mean to tell me I'm supposed to believe that in this, even though in TV and movies all the time I see fights and I see people cut and I see people bleeding and I see people with swollen eyes and all that crap. Now I tune into the WWE and I can hit him 30 times in the face with my fist and nothing happens. It affects the credibility of the product. Uh, why is it now? Why is Zack Ryder still with WWE? Seriously. It's called Zack Ryder enjoys getting a decent paycheck for not doing a whole lot. That's the only fucking reason he's still with the WWE. It has to be. I think in part the WWE likes having him around because they like fucking with him. They still like fucking with him and they like fucking with the fans. Of love and hate, did you hear that TNA has Matt Hardy dressed up as a fucking Bigfoot? Eh, anything would surprise me at this point in time. Who gives a shit? Guest 5, is there anything to be done to try and shake up things and make WWE interesting again? Too many, too numerous for me to name. Uh, Devlin Husband 16. When do you see John Cena retiring? When hell freezes over or hell comes to Frogtown. Yes! Worked in a Roddy Piper pun. All right. Guest 5 also asks, what has gone wrong with WWE within the last 10 years or so? And why have they allowed it to get this bad? 10 years. John Cena at the top 10 years. No, it's not just him. There's so many factors, again, I've talked about them, too numerous to name here. Leech Tony D, do you plan on buying Dr. Dre's new album? No, absolutely not. SAFC Bunny asks, would you trade Jay Culler for Andy Dalton, given the chance and reason why or why not? Um, no, and the reason being is that while Dalton is younger and has a more affordable contract, at the end of the day in the modern NFL, it is a documented fact, as I've talked about when I talk about the NFL on numerous occasions, that in order to become a championship contending team and ultimately win a championship in this day and age, you have to draft and develop your own quarterback. Trading for him, signing in free agency, doesn't work. We have the exceptions to the rule. You say the same to almost Drew Brees, okay. Drew Brees is going to the Hall of Fame. Well, the Broncos got to a Super Bowl with Peyton Manning again. Peyton Manning is going to the Hall of Fame first ballot. You have to draft and develop your quarterback, period. So trading Cutler for Andy Dalton would be just like trading one problem for another. It doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't take care of the situation. It doesn't fix anything. And that's just that. All right, so thanks to you guys that submitted your questions for this Twitter Q&A. Hopefully next time we mix in some more fun questions. I want to have some fun doing this shit. Come on now. You can see here, watch me for 15 minutes. Why not have some laughs, giggles, and chuckles, and chuckles along the fucking way? Uh, make sure you check out the other videos on this channel, including this week's Raw review, and make sure you check out the Facebook Q&A that's coming up soon.